Write in the mail, MS sex games from Japan. Collecting without fail, those shoot 'em ups, and that's the plan. He doesn't just collect them, he also codes them too. Join us and we'll go on electric adventures with you. Hey YouTubers, Electric Adventures here with a response video to a video I've been tagged in. Um, good um, uh, long-term mate and YouTuber Interghost, uh, who I've known basically since I started on YouTube, and he's been around for way longer than me. Um, uh, he, you know, misses community questions and tag and response videos, so I thought he'd um, do a new one, um, and he actually picked quite an interesting topic. So this one is the My Original Tag, and um, 10 items as well, so 10 different categories which he's named. I'll put all the details down below, plus a link to Intego's original video, of course. Um, so there are 10 original items uh, that you've owned since you got them um, new or second, you know, when you very first bought them. Um, not, uh, not including any items that you may have had back in the day and you've replaced. Um, even if you've got the exact same items back, um, just trying to you know see what people have kept um, for as long as time as possible in t ten quite interesting categories. Now, unfortunately, the first category is actually um, action figure or uh, something like that, and um, I've had quite a decent hunt around, and I actually have none. Um, I did have some Star Wars figures back in the day. Probably my very first figures uh, would have been Micronauts. I'll try and put some pictures up here. So this is the only one I'm going to have to cheat and put pictures up. So I had Micronauts back in the day. Um, I also had a Cylon Warrior. Um, oh, I don't know whether I'll find a picture of that. Uh, they were my first original figures and then I had some loose Star Wars figures. I always wanted Star Wars figures but I could never afford them. Um, so I never had very many, and I actually gave them all away um, in a Darth Vader's collector's case uh, to um, a, a friend quite a long time ago. You're probably talking 15 plus years ago. Um, and I've had a good hunt around, and I've got I've I've, I've got nothing other than something uh, some things that have been given to me in recent times. So they don't really count as my original stuff. So that's the that's the only one I'm going to skip. So number two is a soft toy. So this is the oldest soft toy uh, collectible that I have um, and it's a Star Wars one. Uh, a lot of my stuff's going to be Star Wars um, and it's actually an Ewok. Now interesting thing at the same time that I bought this um, there was also a princess so in, you got these uh, toys come in lots and there's always a rare toy and a common toy so the common thing was was Wicket and uh, Ewok, and then there was the Princess. Oh no, I'm going to say her name wrong. Uh, and she was like one. There was one of those in every box of twenty or ten or something like that. Uh, we actually have one of those as well, but that's I consider that that's my wife's. Um, and it's with other soft toys all packed up in bags in the roof of her house. Hopefully, it hasn't been eaten. But this one was easily accessible because it's sitting up on top of a shelf up there. So soft toys. Otherwise you would have ended up with a plush R2-D2, which is a little bit later than that one. Okay, number three. So, cassette. So, a cassette game. Um, so, uh, I'm going to put two answers here. So, my very first computer was a TI-99-4. Uh, I actually didn't have any cassette games for that. I, I had probably my first cartridge game, uh, which was TI Invaders. Um, my second computer was a Spectre Video SV318, the one with the white one with the red joystick in the side. I sold that unit along with all my original software for that one, so all of the other ones I've got are ones I've rebought later. So then we go up to the MSX. So the very first MSX machine I got was a Spectre Video um, SVI728. Um, couldn't afford to buy many games, but I did actually buy. Uh, what, I, I still have the cassette of the very first game I bought for the system. It's actually, of course, being cheap, a Mastronics title, and it's chiller. It's actually not a bad little um, uh, platformy type explorer game, and it's still in 
you know, pretty good condition and it still loads from last time I tried it. I also like to mention I was going to put up my own game. So here's an original copy of my own game Pixidis for the, uh, this is the MSX version. I do actually have a Spectre Video version as well, but that's a restored copy. Um, so I thought I was a bit funny listing my own game, so that's why I replaced it with Chiller. So I'm not going to do alternates for all of these as well. So number four is a cartridge title. And once again, I mentioned I had uh, TI Invaders for the TI-994. Don't have that. Uh, never actually bought any games uh, for the Spectre video on cartridge because once again too expensive, couldn't afford them. MSX, too expensive, couldn't afford them. I didn't actually have my first cartridge for the MSX, which you may find surprising considering the size of my collection, uh, at least until about 18 years ago. So then we move on to the next um, era of uh, thing where I had cartridges, um, didn't have a um, original Nintendo. Um, I played Master System at the store I used to work in, but I didn't own one. I just played the one in the store. So the next time that I actually owned a console was the Super Nintendo. Um, now, another problem here is all my stuff got stolen. I still actually have the original Super Nintendo I have. Most of the games got stolen, so I would have actually picked um, you know, uh, Super Star Wars, but I've only got the box for that one. But I do have, I missed this one, Super Empire Strikes Back. I have since put it in this plastic case to protect it. This is my original copy from back in the day. I played this game heaps on my um, Super Nintendo back in the day. Um, and I've um, been playing it for a while, probably about time I got it out and have another go at it. Uh, recently, very recently, I got a copy of um, uh, Super Return of the Jedi, uh, which I never owned back in the day. Um, that was a bit of fun, although very hard. I didn't realise how hard that game was. Right, number five. Number five is um, a CD-based game. So the oldest one that I find, I, and I'm lucky here, I do have all of my CD games, and these are PC. So P I was a PC gamer. Um, I was one... No, no, I've got that wrong. What game was after this? This was the first one. So my very first proper CD game was X-Wing. I've got the special CD Collector's Edition version. Now, more than likely, I probably played this game as a pirate copy first, and then got this, because I love the game so much. But it is still my original one from back in the day. And I actually have all of these Star Wars games for the PC. Um, I think I've shown that before in a pr previous um, video. But um, maybe I should cover my PC game collection at some stage. Comments down below, but anyway, that one of my favourite games from back in the day. Number six, music. Also, we have an issue here. Um, in the same break-in, all of our music CDs from back in the day were stolen, except for ten CDs that were actually um, in a CD rack on my computer desk, and they must just have stuff in front of them, but every, other than that, they stole every single CD we had. I did subsequently replace all of them. Now. Um, I remember what those 10 are, um, so this is sort of a, like a random pick, um, and yeah, I, I, and I'm definitely sure this is my one from back in the day, and it is yellow, so this is the very first yellow CD that I bought, um, so the new mix all in one go, so it's, it's sort of like a, um, a best of at this particular stage of yellow. I subsequently went back and bought more yellow albums after that, I really enjoy um, yellow's music. It's one of the ones that um, brings back a lot of memories of me programming games and things too. So, yellow. Right, next we have number seven is a board game. Now here I had heaps to choose from. Um, I actually had a hard time narrowing it down. There's a, I'm looking over there because there's a Star Wars Star Warriors over there. Um, but he had to go show his Space Crusade, which I also do have. And he mentioned he never owned Hero Quest. Oh, I did. Here's my original Hero Quest set. It's still in pretty good condition. It was pretty dusty. <clears throat> I probably shouldn't have worn black today when I tried to get all this stuff out. And you can see everything's still in baggies and, and there's um, handwritten character sheets. There's even a pencil in there. Um, 
and there's two pencils actually. So everything's all in there, all the miniatures are there. Looks like I had a little bit of a go at painting some of them at some stage. But all of the scenery is still there. <coughs> kind of meat dust. <coughs> and here's all the original dice and, and cards. Um, love this game. Um, also bought Advanced Hero Quest after that. And then I think it's Fantasy Quest is the one after that. Um, they are both down at my holiday home because we still play those. But that's probably one of the older ones. I mean, some of the others may have actually been older. They're probably that Star Wars, Star Warriors actually is older. And there was another um, Magical Quest game, uh, but it was underneath a lot of stuff. So Hero Quest was easier to get out. Um, and it just reminded me that I need to clean that cupboard out and dust all of those things at some stage. Okay, number eight, Mag comic. Uh, now, once again, my original, original comics from back in the day, um, uh, they were in a box at my mother's place, and I left them there when I moved out. And of course, what did my mother do? She gave them to the kids um, over the back fence. But, <clears throat> at some stage, I discovered, uh, going through uh, things in my mother's house, she, well, she, she actually one day showed, oh, look, I found a box of your old comics. And... So once again, back in the day, I only had pocket money and change, so I couldn't buy comics new. But these are the oldest comics of mine that I have. I've, I've picked two because they're sort of stuck together. And we have Star Wars, uh, issue number two. Obviously second hand, you can see it was bought a second hand store because it's got stuff written on the cover. Um, for considering that, it's still in reasonable condition. Um, I would have read this heaps back in the day. I did have number one. I don't, that was probably in the upper box, unfortunately. Um, and I thought I'd show you. Now, I've got a few. So the next number up, I've got number, it's number 11. Um, I said I have no memory of when I actually got these. But these are the only original ones from back in the day. The only other ones that I still do have are my own father's uh, Phantom Comics. Um, and another one which the, the cover's always been off ever since I've had it is called Black Black Hawk, I think it is. Um, they, they were my father's, so, so they weren't mine. I couldn't count those. Uh, and the Phantom Comics, like I think I've got issue 112, which is really old, and number 200 and something. So uh, done on newsprint though, Phantom Comics, so they do look very old. Um, okay, so that was Man Comics. So number nine is a book. <clears throat> so, the very first science fiction book that I um, ever read was 2001 A Space Odyssey, but that was from the library, um, and that got me hooked into sci-fi. Um, but also, before that, I used to re uh, read murder mysteries, so I used to read Alfred Hitchcock and Agatha Christie books. Um, so, one book in the sci-fi section that uh, attracted my notice and got me into Isaac Asimov was The Naked Sun. So there we go, I paid $6.95 for this back in the day. Still in pretty good condition. So this is my original one from back in the day. So this is the very first book in what becomes the, um, the Robots series, which merges into the Foundation series. Now, I could have easily have picked Foundation as well, but uh, I did get Foundation after this book. So. I believe I've got them in the right order, and this is the first Isaac Asimov book that I wrote. That's right, right, read, didn't write. Um, and um, I pretty much ended up collecting all of Isaac Asimov's written works. So, and I still have them, um, same as E. Doc Smith, um, and um, I'm having a blank. Uh, Philip K. Dick, yes, I have a complete collect and collection of Philip K. Dick's works as well. I've got a lot of Heinlein, uh, all those sort of sci-fi books I used to read lots and lots back in the day. Um, and when I first started this game room, a lot of the books were in here. Uh, but the games have sort of kicked them out. And, but the book, I've kept all the books and they are stored in very nice boxes and all packed away. So I didn't have it too long to find this, but... Um, yeah, a lot of nostalgia for this book and a great series to read. So it, it, it's a sci-fi detective it starts out as and then gets his books get more sci-fi after that. Alright, so that's a book. So number 10 
Last one, merchandise. What have we got? Right, here we go. Now, <clears throat> I've got a lot of merchandise from around the mid to late 90s, because that's when I was running a store. Um, but I thought this one would count as one, and I do have a couple of these. Um, and this is a signed print from Claudia Christian from Babylon 5. Babylon 5 was one of my favourite TV series, um, and I basically, you know, watched it from the very beginning, loved all the characters in the story. So I'm looking at this, it was a cobweb, and there's actually a spider sitting in the back of this picture. <laughs> uh, my daughters or my wife would freak. Um, so, there's my merchandising. I sort of counted a, you know, it's a, it is a merchandising for a show, I suppose. Um, I don't have anything too old. There probably might have been some Star Wars stuff. That spider is moving. That over there for the moment. And let him escape. All right, so there are my 10 answers. What are yours? Um, you can answer them in text below, or you can make your own response video. But make sure you go check out Intergos Original, because he originated the tag. So, um, as with these things go, I'm going to tag some people. So I'm going to tag my good mate, Electobacillus Prime, Mark. Um, it'll be interesting to see what um, he has from back in the day. And so that's ones from Europe. Um, we'll go to Japan to my good mate Soft Otaku, Tony, another fellow Tony. Um, he's a hoarder like myself, so it'll be interesting to see what he can um, find. Uh, so no pressure, don't feel pressure that you have to do this, guys. So um, next I'll go for Dave, Lawn Boys Post 1975. He loves all sorts of miscellaneous tat and um, has lots of things up in the loft. So interesting to see. So we better pick somebody from over in the US. So I'll uh, go my good mate Michael B. The Game Genie. Um, now he's in um, young kidling mode. Uh, has only recently got back into uh, making himself a game room again. Um, and he's got some of the mini arcades and things. So if you can't find your stuff, mate, it's all good. Oh, and I'll also pick Billy from the Game Chasers. Um, he actually posted a video recently that they're having great difficulty getting out and doing normal Game Chasers things. So, and he loves, he's done a couple of um, you know, top four Fridays and things like that. So he might like a list of um, 10 items to go through. It'll be interesting to see what he's kept from back in the day. And I know he has lots of really interesting toys um, and he's a big fan of the Gremlins as well. So it'll be interesting if you get time, Billy, to have a go. All right. I uh, hope you've enjoyed this video. I'm Electric Adventures. Thanks to all my subscribers, and I'll catch you next time.